general terms and condition that you would need in your sale agreement would be purchase price because we settle it on our price now one million right another term is the deposit you need to know what percentage of the deposit you are being paid later we will show you the importance again of the deposit just general terms you need the purchase price you need the deposit secondly you need a completion date the agreement mm. for sale has a lifespan 90 days three months six months two years anytime you go over three years your agreement for sale must be registered so you wouldn't complicate it and go after three years so within a year two years a time is needed for your agreement for sale there are other aspects called completion documents you would want to make sure that the vendor doesn't owe any arrest to wasa so an important term in your agreement for sale is something called completion documents i need to see a copy of your deed i need to see a land and building taxes do you have a mortgage well i need to see how much is owing on the mortgage do you have a mortgage and it was paid well, then i need to see your deed of release all these things can be broadly categorized as completion documents wasa bill land and building tax so it's you are not purchasing a property with 10,000 arrest to Wasa, 15,000 arrest to TNT, and you have to pay now because you are the co-owner. You do all these checks before you purchase the, the property. And this is why you have the agreement for sale and the, the 90 days or the, the, the six months before you actually sign the deed because you want to clear these issues up. You want a Wasa clearance to make sure no money is owing because that would affect your purchase price. Because if you owe 10,000 to Wasa, you have to take out that from your purchase price. Correct. So these, Correct. these are some of the important clauses that you need. Two other important clauses would be two clauses in relation to the deposit. If the 90 days reach and the vendor is not able to complete his end of the bargain, which is have proper title, have no monies owing to nobody on the property, and ready and willing to transfer the property to the purchaser once he once at the end of the agreement to sale he is in that position then he has access to the deposit now your purchase price together with your deposit would make you one million however if the vendor at the 90th day is unable to transfer the property to you because you don't have proper title or money going to wasa or whatever the case may be then he has to refund the deposit as on the vendor side on the purchaser side now let's say the 90 and day the last year reaches and the purchaser didn't get all his money so we paid a hundred thousand as a deposit now we have nine hundred thousand to pay for whatever reason emergency whatever he's unable to secure the nine hundred thousand dollars on the 90 a day to close the transaction the vendor has all his documents the vendor has his deed the vendor ready to go but the purchaser is at fault here then the purchaser would lose his deposit because you've been waiting 90 days for you legally legally right so that i mean legally. because sometimes right good because so, yes what i wanted to include in that as mr paul have been asking in terms of the features for an agreement and some of the things that we have seen that vary there are variations of course to what mr daniel is speaking about and we have seen um, variations where that obligation, because he is describing really what are the liabilities for each party, right? Whether, not necessarily for loss or damage, but the default of the arrangement by which payment is supposed to be made. There are some agreements where the vendor says, I will refund the sale, the um, deposit whether or not i am at fault if the sale um, if the sale goes through or not yeah right but right. if the sale does not go through for whatever reason right so some vendors they just they don't care they don't want to keep anybody's money if the money is held in escrow and something for straight transaction they may agree to give back the um purchaser a percentage of the deposit but they are not obligated to do so in law so there can be variations of the obligation that each party to the agreement will undertake for their particular matter. And for instance, 
why they may want to do that. Sometimes I've seen it in Toronto and Tobago. There is some interesting things going on with the title. And the vendor themselves know that it's a straightforward sale, right? And mm -hmm. it may have things that frustrate the transaction that may inadvertently not, not be the fault of the purchaser. So it, it really has to be the circumstances surrounding the sale agreement and the transaction that will dictate what obligations and promises each party agrees to. But once you agree to that, you are bound by the expressed terms in that agreement. Yes, and standard sales Understood. agreement it will be the vendor to seize the deposit if the purchaser cannot come. Anything yes. to vary from that would be played on a good conscience and the Correct. of the vendor to allow a refund. So that is, that is why let, the, the let me, agreement is important. Let me throw in a controversial ask here. Is, are there things that you cannot put in a sales agreement legally that you have seen that people commonly or common, <laughs> to common things people try to put into the sales agreement that you know may be um unconscionable to the purchaser or unconscionable to the to the vendor well most likely to the purchaser because the, the sales agreement does favor the vendor is there anything well, particular i won't say that can... the, remember it's the agreement between the two parties so if if the vendor right. say well this lot of land i'll, I'll sell their elephant with it then that's <laughs> what the parties agree to but so, something to highlight on this point is that they make promises that they know they cannot keep. So for mm -hmm. the lot land, there's no roadway. The vendor might say, yeah, 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 um, I'll make a roadway to access the lot. You want to put as mm -hmm. a terminal sale agreement? Yeah, yeah, you put it now. <laughs> Time come, no road, but you want your land. You sign off. And this is a problem I have all the time. You sign off your deed. Yeah. So six months later, they call it the attorney. Yeah, your client never put the road in there. I can access the land. I said, but the sale agreement came to an end. When you sign the deed, when the time mm. expired, your sale agreement comes to an end. So you put whatever mm. terms you want. But when okay. you sign your deed and you say, I accept. And money pass. And money pass. I accept the land. I accept what it is. And you sign your deed. The agreement for sale comes to an end. You cannot rely on any of mm. the promises any of the terms and conditions on the sale agreement anymore it's just a preamble mm -hmm. to your deed so whatever clause you have in there that's only really valid to sign an off the deed or the expiration of the agreement i'm glad that mr daniel has brought up that because it reminds me of some TikTok questions i do pay attention to you all here too um students have been asking me about sale agreement in terms of of the valid the power of it right um seal agreements while they influence and give body or structure to a deed they are not deeds and they do not carry the same legal authority i had one question that said hi today um can you use a seal agreement as rights to a property right and then she asked if it's legal to and I'm hoping, I'm, I'm assuming that when somebody says rights to the property, they mean that, okay, well, I have a sale agreement that is um, written and agreed upon here. Does that mean that I can move into the property? Can I start doing things on it, etc.? Right? Save and accept for if that is actually in your agreement. A sale agreement does not give you title ownership of a property. It also doesn't give you permission to possess the property or to take possession of the property. In fact, most these agreements have that the vendor is supposed to surrender vacant position to the purchaser at the completion mm -hmm. of it, not before. So you cannot use a sale agreement to enter the property as you are about to buy simply because you have put a down payment on it. You do not own the property until you have executed a deed, as Mr. Daniel is stating. These two documents, even though they may mirror each other, they do not replace each other. You cannot use a sale agreement's power to act as if it is a deed. You, your rights, title, and interest can only be passed. And I just want to say this because it covers all other webinars, whether people in Toronto, they go seem to think that all sorts of documents give them rights. 
I've heard them talk about wills. I've heard them talk about agreements. I've heard them nothing else but a deed or it's equivalent under the RPO, which is any certificate of title or memorandum thereof, transfers yeah, rights, yeah. title, interests. 